Her name was Nadia. She was 14. It was 1976 at the Montreal Olympics. Remember? Chris, this could be the highlight of the compulsory event. She is one of the technically strongest, best gymnasts that I've ever seen. Kathy Rigby Watch knew it. she was a fine competitor. She had proven that at the European Championships a year earlier. However, as she performed this memorable routine, we witnessed unprecedented excellence. She was shattering all previous standards for women's gymnastics. Look at that, right to the handstand. Gorgeous routine, beautiful, and the crowd loved it. The crowd did indeed respond, but the impact of what had happened was yet to come. As we watched the replay, this historic moment of truth exploded in the arena. It was the first perfect ten in Olympic history, but it was only the beginning. She left Montreal with six more tens and three Olympic gold medals. This initial expression of joy, however, was lost in the pressure of competitive moments and years to come. We seldom ever saw her smile again. This is Nadia now. come out here with your your lunch and have a picnic and eat here I didn't have time I forgot you don't eat right? this is Chris Schenkel Kurt Thomas and I have come to Romania for a national celebration given in Nadia Comaneci's honor she is announcing her official retirement she will never compete again nine countries have sent representatives to honor her in addition Juan Antonio Samaranch, the president of the International Olympic Committee, is here to present her with a special award. She will be performing publicly for the first time in three years. And for someone who has dealt so often with perfection, she is under a great deal of self-imposed pressure. It's quite a moment for her and for us. Our last look at Nadia as a gymnast. Coming up on ABC's Wide World of Sports. It was announced yesterday that 1976 Olympic star Nadia Comaneci will be coming to Los Angeles to work with the Romanian gymnastics team, which has defied the Soviet-led boycott of these games. Today, we'll see her final performance and emotional farewell. Occasion. ...in Los Angeles during the Olympics, working with the Romanian gym team. Recently, she said an emotional farewell to the sport which made her famous in Bucharest, Romania, and our Chris Schenkel was there. Bucharest is a town that sometimes seems to try to be Paris, yet it has its own dignity and pride. The pride is well manifested in monuments honoring moments of Romanian glory and memorials to citizens who sacrificed in times past. There is today, however, a living national treasure who is idolized by the country's youth and whose amazing accomplishments fill all Romanians with a sense of pride. She burst upon the international gymnastics scene on a tournament called Champions All in London in 1975. She wowed the crowd and the aficionados as well. She had been a Romanian secret weapon. Here she took her first world-class step toward the Montreal Olympics. A 13-year-old prodigy with a Mona Lisa countenance. Her name was Nadia Comaneci. Kurt Thomas and I have come to Romania not only to join others who are about to honor her in a special feat, but also to visit with her, see where she lives, learn what her life is like today, and set the record straight on some of the controversial issues which plagued her during the ups and downs of her intensely competitive years. I'm Chris Schenkel. We're standing in front of the Bucharest Palace of Sports and Culture. And the best way to put this event in context is to refer to this Romanian newspaper. As you can see, there's a picture of Nadia Comaneci. It says that you'll see Nadia Comaneci in a festival in her honor. And it also goes on to praise her incredible career when she dominated the world of gymnastics for 10 years. Now, the festival itself is in two parts. First, there is friendly competition. She is not involved. Then, there is a festival of children, a tribute to her. The friendly competition has been completed now, and the festival has begun. Children from gymnastic schools all across Romania are participating in this show of admiration for their most famous champion, 
who is about to perform for the last time publicly. I'm with former three-time world champion, Kurt Thomas. And despite the festive gala, we, along with the rest of the crowd, are really here for one reason. Uh, we came here to pay our last respects to her and watch the, the final competition, the farewell of Nadia. And I'll tell you, it's sad for me to say, and it's, but I hate to see her retire. She's doing so well. I watched her in the gym the other day. She's doing terrific. And it's kind of sad to see. But, you know, I did get to spend a little time with her, and she's, she's a different person from the person we saw in 1976. Well, let's go inside and watch. Okay. All right. So... There's Nadia, surrounded by spectators and press, preparing for the first of her two exhibition performances. Let's look back and trace her extraordinary gymnastics career. She was born Nadia Elena Komenich. By the time of this film, at age 10, she had already been immersed in gymnastics for four years. She was always determined. Her first vivid recollection is at age two, toppling a Christmas tree while trying to reach some candy. The tree fell on top of her but the candy remained clutched in her tiny hand. Her mother tells of Nadia being obsessed with tree climbing. Nadia simply says she was a tomboy. In her hometown of Onesh, the six-year-old child's day began with four hours of training, then academic classes in the afternoon. In time, more practice was added in the evenings. She ate lunch and dinner at what we would call a training table then took the 10-minute walk to her home and her homework and sleep. Eventually, she moved into the hostel, connected with the new gymnastics hall in Onesh, but she remained close to her family. She loved gymnastics, and the life of a developing athlete was just plain fun. After preliminary training by early coaches, Bella Caroli became her Svengali. In her biography, Nadia says, Bella demanded absolute obedience and had complete power over us. In her first competition at age nine, she helped her team win the Romanian National Championship. However, she remembers most her humiliation in falling off the beam three times. Yet as the years progressed, Bella, the demanding coach, continually and consistently supported and led her quest for perfection. That quest took hold when she upset the Soviet reigning champion Ludmila Turistcheva at the 1975 European Championships. It was the first of three such victories. Then on to Montreal, her first perfect 10 followed by six more tens out of 16 performances. That accomplishment was so extraordinary and unprecedented that the Olympic scoreboard could not accommodate a score of 10. Well, the officials improvised as best they could by registering a one to the crowd. As the genius of her technical ability became more and more validated by the judges, the press became somewhat unkind while continuing to praise her gymnastic ability, they harshly characterized her personality. They called her Little Miss Perfect, the gym machine, and the ice queen. We now know their criticism was unjust. She simply was a shy 14-year-old athlete concentrating on the sport she loved. In 1977, the Romanian team walked out of the European Championships in protest of the scoring. And then, as we see here, a different Nadia appeared at the 78 World Championships in Strasbourg, France. She was taller, yes, but most of all, she had put on more than 20 pounds. Although she won a gold medal on the beam, somehow her floor exercise reflected the adolescent frenzy of a girl trying to hold on to childhood in the face of burgeoning maturity. A year later at the World Cup in Tokyo, amid unfounded rumors of actual suicide attempts, Nadia arrived, jet-lagged, adorned with a Mickey Mouse t-shirt. She then blew the gymnastics world away one more time by revealing herself now as a magnificent young woman with the same talent and ability she had in the past. 
at the World Championships in Fort Worth shortly thereafter. She paid the price for the intensity and deprivation involved with her comeback. She was unable to overcome an infection in her wrist. After bravely competing in the beam to keep her team in contention, she had to withdraw with the echo of a fan shouting, We still love you, Nadia. After the Moscow Olympic Games, where she won two gold medals and a silver in the all-around, the world's last look at Nadia was here at the World University Games that were held in Bucharest, Romania in 1981. She lighted the torch to inaugurate the festivities. And she responded to that honor by scoring a perfect 10 in the floor exercise, another 10 in the vault, and winning a gold medal in the uneven parallel bars. Again, this was three years ago. She hasn't competed or trained since. This was the last time she was seen in competition. Now Nadia is a student at the University of Bucharest. She has also become an international judge and now is head coach of the Romanian national junior team. Underneath the respect of her students here is great admiration for this wonderful athlete. She puts him through a vigorous workout. Recently, Nadia has gone back into intensive training to prepare herself for her final appearance. She's nervous, and she's tense. But the crowd in the hall awaits her two final routines, and so do we. The elements will come to... Single spotlight on a wonderful Olympic champion, Nadia Komenich. Preparing to work the balance beam. This one minute routine, Chris, is gonna feel like an hour to her. She's very tense, very nervous at this point. But as you can see, she's concentrating. Is she thinking of about falling at this point? I don't think a champion thinks of any type of negatives. I think she's thinking right now, stay on. What to do right, not what to do wrong. I'll tell you, I've spotted a negative around this uh, narrow beam. The many still photographers, that has to be a unbelievable distraction for her. It really is, and, and especially the, the flash cubes. Now there's her press to a handstand, straddle press to a handstand. She's done so many times. And the gainer back handspring, very nicely done. Typical dance. There's a full turn, one of the requirements on this event. And she doesn't look nervous now, does she? Two-time Olympic gold medal winner on the beam, Montreal and Moscow. You know, she put so much time in on this event, and I'm not surprised that she's doing as well as she is right now. Here comes the difficult one, aerial walkover. No problem. Full house, loving it. You know, Chris, they would love anything she would do right now. <laughs> she could walk back and forth, and, and that's it, jump off, and they'd love it. Looks like a little bit of an ankle problem there. Mm -hmm. Maybe she's had some problems in training. She's got a little tape on it. Here comes her Valdez. Very nice split leap. It's interesting that the photographers are that close. Mm -hmm. You know, in the Olympic Games, they can't get 30 or 40 feet from the athletes. And her dismount, round off layout, beautiful. Oh, she stayed on. Does that bring back memories of Montreal, Kurt? Well, I'm just happy that she stayed on. <laughs> oh, so it, it, am means I. A lot to what her. a relief for the capacity crowd and for the two of us. She's, Nadia Komenich. She's relieved. And here's the bow, the waving of the hands. Let's see a smile, Nadia. And bringing back memories of a great all-around Olympic world and European champion, Nadia Komenich, who lives right here in Bucharest, Romania, with her mother on the right and her stepfather. And I know, Kurt, you had an opportunity to see that home. Tell us about it. Chris, she lives on a quiet little street in a nice house, and it was interesting for me to see where she lives and how she lives in Romania. This is my house. 
out. This is it, huh? As I approached, I noticed that it was freshly painted and very well manicured. That's your chicken? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 A dog? A dog? Big one. Big one? Well, as we entered the house here, I was a little surprised to see a six-foot pink and white doorman. But it was a nice surprise. So who is this? This is uh, from Venezuela. The present team? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now we moved into fantasy land. Nadia has collected dolls for a long time, and once the word was out, people from all over the world would send her dolls. She had dolls in the library, dolls in her bedroom, dolls all over the house. Later, she pointed out some of the more interesting dolls and some of her favorites. This is my library, yeah, and uh, some of my friends. Your friends, huh? Where did you get these? I received from some people. Where's your favorite? This one. Why? Because it cries sometimes. It cries sometimes, huh? It looks like a child. This is great. Then we moved into the more interesting part of the house, the trophy room. Hello. Well, at least for me it was. I got to meet her mother, then her brother Adrian, who I understand is a very fine tennis player, then the trophies. And in contrast to the dolls, the medals were really just kind of stashed casually in a case on the side. There's an Olympic medal, a Montreal gold medal. There's the European Championship Cups. She won three years in a row. Then we looked at some of the medals the gold medals. Later, I had a chance to sit down Thank and you. talk with her in a park and ask her why she was quitting. I don't want to compete anymore. You don't want to? No. You don't feel like it? I'm not uh, so good to be number one again. So if you're not number one, you don't want to? No, I don't. Don't need. What about more medals? I think that I have enough medals. <laughs> Don't you think you could be number one again if you really wanted to? Maybe if I want, but I think that uh, it's enough for me. What if you took some time off and just no gymnastics, just vacation, and then came back and started training? Would you want to then? No. Because I look in a gym and I see the coaches working with little girls and trying to make them like you, yeah. and you're already there. Three months till the Olympics, and you don't, uh, you don't want to go. It's too late now. It's too late. Yes. What happened after 1976? 1978, you, world championships, you gained a lot of weight. You turned from a little girl into a woman. Is yes. It, is this the period that yes. you changed? Mm -hmm. and that was my problem, my big problem. So how did you cope with that? How did you deal with that? Very hard, but if you want to do something, you can do. What, what kept you going? How did you deal with that? Uh, it was very hard for me because I uh, had uh, 10 kilos more than Olympics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, had uh, special exercises running and something with uh, more uh, dress mm -hmm. and uh, no eat uh, nothing nothing eight nine nothing days to eat. nine days in nine days nothing to nothing. eat you once told me no water nothing nothing no and water do, no and do training training for nine days and no yes, food and no. no water because you wanted to yes didn't you ever want to stop and say forget it no. Why? Because I wanted to to be skinny again. Mm -hmm. You wanted to make a comeback. Yes. 
So what made you come back then, and you won't come back now? To come back in gymnastics? You know, I like, I like it very much gymnastics, and I like it now. But I think that at 22 years old, it's a little hard to do. Well, Chris, she's 22 years old now, and I think she just doesn't have the desire left in her. But we'll see her one more time in just a minute. Well, Kurt, and ladies and gentlemen, difficult to say that you are about to see the very last public performance by this great champion, Nadia Komenich. It sure is, Chris, and this is a, a moment that I think we'll treasure for a long time. This young lady has done so much for the sport of gymnastics, and this is her final bow. And the crowd is with her immediately, Kurt. Well, we'll see what she opens up with here. Round off, backhand spring, double full, very nicely done. Stepped out of bounds a little there, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just kills me is the amount of talent that this young lady still has. But, you know, the, the desire is obviously not there. She could do anything she wants in this sport of gymnastics, and I think she's going to obviously go the, the normal, typical route, and go into judging, go into coaching, and just stay actively involved. Kurt, there's always been a strange magic about her, and it continues. A shy, private, lovely lady. I think it's a mystique. I think she's just very mysterious. The layout. And her virtuosity still shows. It really does. She's a performer. She will miss that. Yes, she will. I know that. That's the reason I'm still performing, because you, you, you just miss the crowd. You miss the clapping. Very nostalgic. Even the music, Kurt, as we watch here in Romania. Hmm. There will never be another Nadia Comaneci. You can bet that. And the last tumbling run, layout step out. There it is, the Nadia Komenich pose. Pressure's off, Chris. The young lady we saw go from a child to a woman has set a standard for all the young gymnasts in the world to try and emulate. Chris, you called it back in 1976. You're here with her now. I competed with her. It's, it's a sad moment, isn't it? Kurt, I can only think of one word to describe the experience. Unforgettable. Nadia Komenich. There's more yet to come. A final salute to Nadia and her. And now here in the final ceremonies, Juan Antonio Samaranch, president of the International Olympic Committee, presenting Nadia with a most prestigious award. And Chris, that award is called the Order of the Olympics Award, and it's the highest award given by the IOC. It's beautiful, isn't it? And deserved. And prior to this award, representatives from nine other countries presented Nadia with great gifts of appreciation. And now perhaps one of the most difficult parts of the whole ceremony. I remember that fantastic day of August 19, 1976, when the President of the Socialist Republic of Romania and the General Party Secretary of uh, Nicolae Ceausescu conferred on me in this very place the high honor of Hero of Socialist Labor and the Gold Medal of the Sickle and Hammer. It was a moment forever inscribed in my heart. I relive these emotional moments now once again. International personalities of the world of gymnastics, competitors, and coaches have honored me with their presence in this event, organized for the occasion of my leaving competition. It is hard for me to accept that from here on, I will no longer compete and no longer live these special emotions. Oh, Chris. Well, this is the young lady the press said had no emotion. Well, I guess we know her now, huh? Look at her. I assure all those who have joined my performances of my dedication to the further development of gymnastics 
and I will continue to be a part of the sport as a professor, coach, and as a judge. I will do everything possible to develop new talent and their perfection. Finding ourselves but a few days from the worldwide sporting event, the Summer Olympics, I wish all the Romanian sportsmen and women, and particularly the Romanian gymnasts, great success at the most important international competition, and I hope they will win as many medals as possible for the greater glory of the Socialist Republic of Romania. Nadia Comanic. And yes, we look forward to seeing the Romanian gymnasts at the Los Angeles Olympic Games. There may be winners in that group, but never another Nadia. And Chris, in closing, Nadia gave me something that's very special to me, and I think it, it's the one thing that describes her best. It's a song that she likes the best, and the name of it is Words Don't Come Easy to Me. arrangements made through and a promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies to Hong Kong from Moortop Business Centers with three-class Royal Pacific service.